melanoma seems especially sort of insidious to me because it can spread to other parts of the body, um, you know, through the lymphatic system or through the blood and, and, and you never know where it might end up. And sometimes that, of course, makes you more fearful than you need be, um, which is why I, I personally find the ongoing um, checks every um, three months and then six months and so on, I find them very reassuring, though, of course, I'm endlessly deciding that I'm about to die of cancer of the knee or or whatever, or the earlobe or whatever. But um, and, and, you know, three years now in now, everything seems fine, which is great. Um, but I'm also conscious that sometimes people are so frightened that they just don't want to take part anymore. And that is a really big mistake because I remember at, um, uh, at, at a dinner with you and some other uh, people who've been working in this field for a long time, one woman said to me, it was such a delight that she'd worked in um, melanoma and skin cancer for 35 years. And for 30 of those years, all she'd ever really been able to do was manage people's expectations about when they might die. And for the last five years, she's been able to save people's lives. And that's just a phenomenal, you know, I mean, it's as what, what has happened in research and, and medicine in relation to melanoma is just as significant as what has happened in relation to coronavirus or anything else. Uh, research, um, you know, having good path labs. I mean, the whole mixture of, of the thing is really, really important all, and all those public messages because there's so much we can do to protect ourselves. Thank you, Chris. And again, and, and one important thing that we do as, as a charity is to, is to fund what we hope is innovative and, and helpful research for, for this disease.